Hello everyone and welcome back here to another new comic book day episode at Comic Vantage. Yes, that is correct. We are back here with another new comic book day preview episode. Today I'm going to show you what is coming out uh, this Wednesday, which is new comic book day. That will be April 5th, 2023. So we are early morning start here. We got our computer, our microphone, and a cup of coffee, and our amazing list of comic books brought to you by none other than dun, 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 League of Comic Geeks. Yes, I absolutely love this website. It shows you all the new stuff coming out for the week. And uh, yeah, it really covers almost everything, even like retailer exclusives and all that kind of good stuff. But before we get started, make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button. Yeah, it doesn't cost anything. It helps me out. So, all right. Now, big swig of coffee and let's get to this. Mm hmm. All right. What do we got coming out for this week? Now, if there's anything on this list that you want me to talk about or you think I should be reading, let me know down in the comments down below. I love talking about comic books. <clears throat> All right. So first up, we got Batman 134 coming out this week. We've got Amazing Spider-Man 23. We got Saga number 63. I know a lot of people were excited for Saga to come back. Venom, number 18. Wolverine, 32. Poison Ivy, number 11. Uh, Spider-Man, number 7. Ghost Rider, 13. Now, this is one I actually wanted to show you guys. I have no idea why Ghost Rider is wearing a Weapon X helmet. Um, if you guys have any idea, let me know down in the comments below. But... Uh, there's been a lot of talk about this comic book in particular because of the cover. Now, I don't know anything about the story. I haven't been keeping up on it. But there's been a lot of attention uh, with this just, you know, simply for a cover grab. People are really digging this cover. And they're loving the green flames. And they're speculating on what is to become of him. We also got some another awesome green flame cover down here. Look at that. He's got a big old sword. Okay, so let's get back to this. Let's see what else we got here. Star Wars number 33 coming out this week. Batman and Joker, The Deadly Duo, number 6. Scarlet Witch, number 4. The Immortal X-Men, number 3. King Spawn, number 21. We got The Adventure of Superman, John Kent, number 2. We got Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty, number 11 coming out this week. The Joker, The Man Who Stopped Laughing. Is there anything sadder than a Joker that stopped laughing? Rogue and Gambit, number 2. Walking Dead Deluxe, number 60. Now, if you guys miss Walking Dead the first time around, they have been reprinting Walking Dead in full color. They're calling it Walking Dead Deluxe. Every two weeks, fully colorized. Star Wars Hidden Empire, number 5. Let's see The Flash, 796. Cosmic Ghost Rider, Stillwater, number 18. Joe Fixit, looks like he's fighting the rhino there. That should be a lot of fun. Spider-Gwen Shadow Clones, number 2. Nightclub number four, Avengers War Across Time. Love Everlasting from Image Comics. I Hate This Place number seven, Radiant Pink number four, Fables number 158 this week. Whew. I Am Iron Man. Now, this is one that surprised me. Planet of the Apes issue number one from Marvel Comics. When did Marvel get the rights back for Planet of the Apes? Let's see. A new era of apes kicks off with this. Part 1 of the devolution, the ALZ-113 virus has rampaged across planet Earth and humanity is crumbling. While well-meaning researchers hunt for a cure, a fanatical group of humans has their own solution, kill all apes. Peacekeeper Juliana Tobin is one of the few willing to stand against them, but the crisis is spreading and soon apes will witness the true depths of human cruelty. Wow, that actually sounds really good. I was a huge fan of the original Planet of the Apes movies because, you know, Charlton Heston and all that kind of good stuff. But yeah, check this out. Some great variant covers, so they're really expecting this book to do well. Man, there's a good old iconic cover right there. Oh, man. I think I want to take a closer look at that. So we're going to click on it. It's a 1 in 50 variant cover. Oh, so good. Gotta love that. All right, let's get on to the next. Let's see what else we got coming out this week. Where Monsters Lie, number three. Some Magic the Gathering. Kaya, number seven. Hit the page, number four. Frank Frazetta's Death Dealer, number 11. Let's see. Savage Dragon, 265. Disney Villains Scar. Now, this is one that really also took me by surprise, but wow, it looks so good. 
a startling new vision starring Disney's greatest villain set within the world of the Lion King. Ooh, let's see. We have a tale of a tell a tale of fire and fury centered around an enraged Scar, unable to accept that he will never be king, not so long as Mufasa and his son inhabit Pride Rock. A plan is starting to formulate within Scar's corrupt mind, which will bring him face to face with the mysterious shaman Rafiki. Now, another one that they're expecting to do really well, because look at all these variant covers. Do you guys see this? We have one in 50s, we have one in 10s, one in 5s. Now, this one, I mean, virgin covers. We even have, if I'm not mistaken, let me hover over this. Yes, we have metal covers. Uh, ultra limited. And a 1 in 200 foil variant. Yes, they are expecting retailers to order two hundred copies of this book to get this one now i don't know if that's actually going to happen but ooh, that's some high hopes for dynamite there so all right blood tree number three the witcher ballad of the two wolves number four mosley number three hairball number one a brand new super supernatural nightmare that junji ito Oh, meets Hayao Miyazaki from the Eisner Award Eisner nominated creators of Fear Case and Apache Delivery Service. Okay. A young girl with a black cat meets to or begins to suspect the innocuous beast is behind all of her troubles. Her parents fighting, family plagues, and innumerable innumerable supernatural horrors as she tries her best to rid herself of this creature she discovers what may be that the cat is not evil after all and a greater terror may be behind these horrific events harming her life now we only have one other variant cover it looks like but this just sounds like a fun read now i'm a huge fan of cats absolutely adore cats i have two two myself uh so this i don't know uh, a story centered around a cat. I mean, it just got me written all over it. Really excited for that one. <clears throat> Icon versus Hardware, number two. Samurai Doggy, number five. Okay, we got Flawed, number six. Scooby-Doo, where are you? 121. Let's see, Traveling to Mars. Junk Rabbit, number one. Almighty, number three. The Nasty, number one. And this is brought to us by Vault Comics absolutely love that cover that thing is really cool calling all scary movie fans scotland 1994 18 year old thumper connell still has an imaginary friend the masked killer from his favorite slasher film thumper is obsessed with horror and always has been he fills his time with scary vhs rentals and hanging out with his fellow fans the murder club but everything changes when his local video shop acquires one of the notorious films known as the Video Nasties. Films so scary they're the target of the British Moral Decency League's crusade to ban and burn. But it's only a movie, right? It's all just imaginary, isn't it? A story about the perception of evil, the power of genre, the love of fandom, the need to create art, and oh, the crap your pants, terror. I love the sound of that. And again, Vault Comics is expecting us to buy a lot of these because we have a bunch of variant covers. Not as many as Scar, but oh, that one there looks kind of fun. The 1 in 20 or 75 incentive. Looks like an old movie poster. Wow, I love that. Oh, that is so good. Yeah, I think I need to pick that up. I need to have that in my life. All right, next up. And I'm just going to go down the line here now. Star Trek Deep Space Nine, The Dogs of War. Now, I gotta tell you, I'm probably in the uh, in the the minority here when I say DS9 was probably one of the greatest Star War or Star Trek series. Uh, probably number two as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I loved it. It was absolutely great. It was the king of the overall story arc, where an entire story would just encompass the entire season. I absolutely loved DS9, and there was no greater friendship in TV history other than O'Brien and Bashir, so I will actually fight anyone on that one. All right, Bork. An extremely rare purebred corgi from Earth makes its way aboard Deep Space Nine when Quark cuts a deal to procure it for a high buyer. After all, a Ferengi without profit is no Ferengi at all. 
but Latinum, the Corgi, <laughs> comes with unexpected cargo that shapes, shakes Captain and Benjamin Sisko to the core. A Borg component discovered by a crew sent to uncover Cardassian technology after the station's reoccupation. Don't miss out on this exclusive Lost episode celebrating the 30th anniversary of the fan favorite Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Wow. Okay, what do we got here? We got some variant covers. What is this? That's like a. Oh, okay. This is that. Uh, uh, the Below Decks variant cover, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it's that Below Decks cartoon series that's over on Paramount. They have this kind of animation style. So looks like they did the DS9 crew. And we got Quark with Latinum the Corgi. We have a black and white variant. And then the blueprints of DS9. <clears throat> Still a lot of fun. All right, so what else we got here? Sweetie Candy coming out. Mirko and Doffel's Sweet Paprika, black, white, and pink. Codename Ric Flair. Woo! All right, Magic 8-Ball. The Nature Boy Ric Flair is getting his own comic series from Scout Comics. Absolutely love that. My Little Pony number 11. 2000 AD number 2326 <laughs> from Rebellion Comics. All right, you might have seen a little peek of that that I had open, but Seven Years in Darkness, issue number one. The Academy of Black Magic has reopened its doors for the first time in 200 years. 72 children will walk through the academy doors for freshman year, but only seven will graduate and walk out alive. Their seven-year journey starts here in this dark and sweeping fantasy epic. I really, really love the sound of this. And again, we have a ton of variant covers. I wish I could see what those C2E2 variant covers were. So we are expecting this to do really well. We have three other issues coming out already scheduled. This is from Comic Experience Publishing. Interesting. Never heard of them. All right. Breath of Shadows, number three, coming out. How I Became a Shoplifter, number three, coming out. Hope everybody grabbed their Clerk's Homage cover of issue number one. Skull and Bone, Savage Storms, number two. The Dream Master, number four. Is that supposed to be Freddy Krueger? You know, the Dream Master. Kind of looks like him. That's sort of weird. Nature's Labyrinth, number five. All the devils are here Issue number one. Joe is an elderly dementia patient that becomes possessed by a powerful demon. In order to save him, an unconventional and mysterious exorcist must venture into his mind. Once inside, he finds far more than he bargained for. An ever-changing hellscape created by a fusion of Morris's and the demon's memories that brings JC face to face with his own dramatic past. Oh, I love exorcism stories. That error could be really, really fun read on that one. All right, what else we got here? We got Barnstormers number five, Black Sheep issue number one, Eternus number four from Scout Comics, Second Coming Trinity, Cover the Dead with Lime issue number four, Kitsune number two, Archie and Friends all action, <laughs> Night to the Dinner Table number three hundred and six, Frank Frazetta's Tales of Fantasy and or Science and Fantasy number one. Let's see, Northern Blood number two. I know I think I spotlighted that last month, so make sure you grab that. The Never Ender, the final duel issue number one from Sumerian Comics. Again, Sumerian has been coming out with some really good stuff. The year is 20XD19, and due to breakthroughs and artificial accelerants, mankind has taken to the stars. At the edge of civilization, the dominant sport is a civilized sword duel to the death. The top five fighters are protected by Sogoro, a talented and tenacious duelist. Team Egal... Oh, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Is forced to choose which direction to fight after Merrick openly criticizes the Colonial Republic after his previous duel. Dice and Akino equip Never Ender for the end game. I guess Never Ender is the sword. Sounds kind of fun. I like that. All right, we got... Rest in Peace, number one, coming out this week. Serrano, number two. The Ballad of Ronin, number four and five from Action Lab Comics. Interesting there. Northern Blood, number three. Did we have Northern Blood, number two, earlier? Okay. Fallen, number two. Titan Mouse, number three. Planet Comics, number 16. Sulphur Wells. Unicorn Vampire Hunter, issue number one. A young woman named Jezebel moves to a magical marsh to live with her uncle. Seamus the Wizard, 
and his puppies that never grow old. One day, Jezebel wanders into the dark forest and almost falls victim to a vampire. Luckily, her life is saved by a unicorn, who gores the vampire with its horn, killing it. Jezebel and her uncle welcome the unicorn into their family, but things are about to get dicey. An exciting new heartfelt story of friendship, love, and finding purpose in an unpredictable world. Now, we only have one cover, no variants. That's actually interesting from Scout Comics. All right. Fem Forest issue number 200. Usher of the Dead, the Evil Men Do, issue number one. This is what happens when a serial killer becomes the target of Sariel's scrutiny. His judgment is swift and harsh, making the deeds of the killer seem tame. Oh, inter oh man, that looks like a great cover. A one in five retailer exclusive. A virgin variant cover. <laughs> Uh, I love small press books. They always have so much fun. All right, let's see what else we got here. Maeve, Rising Warrior, number two. The Shepherd, the Tether, issue number one. Also from Scout Comics, from the non-stop imprint. Two years ago, Val Miller, the son of Lawrence Miller, who was the Shepherd, died tragically. Brutalized in the afterlife, Val's soul morphed into a vengeful wolf wraith named Legio. In this terrible form, Val encountered her, his father, who had sensed Val's situation and followed him into eternity. After great anguish and profound insights, father and son vowed to use their new understanding to help other struggling souls. Now, the time, now with time to reflect on his mistakes, Val struggles with regret, mourning the life he can never have. In this state of restless wandering, Val encounters monstrous souls that are hunting a solitary young woman. Now, this story sounds like it's kind of going all over the place, but wow, it sounds complicated and kind of fun. <clears throat> and great variant cover there. Really, really dig that. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Super Babe starring Vem Force. The Ballad of Ronin number six. Blue Exorcist. That's another manga. We got Manga Z number nine. The Atonement Bell number four. Maple Terrace, Carmen Courageous. Hey, this is the last one I wanted to show you guys. Like it, number one from Band of Bards. Now, I have never heard of Band of Bards. Never heard of Lycan. This is like Lycan Girls' Night. A rogue pack of werewolves has been on the run for centuries. After starting new lives in a sleepy Colorado community, living undetected among humans, their enemies have finally tracked them down. Their idyllic suburban lives were a dream, but sometimes you can never escape your past, no matter how hard you try. These women wanted peace, but their tormentors won't let them be. See what happens when they unleash their long-suppressed might. Wow, that actually sounds like a lot of fun. we got a B cover here, which I am more a fan of there. All right, guys, so that's everything. That is all of our books for the week that I wanted to show you guys. Brought to us by the League of Comic Geeks.com. All right, so those are my picks. And let's see, what do we have for the number one pick of the week? Now, I got to tell you guys Scar, issue number one. This has got to be my pick of the week. Any of the covers, doesn't matter. Just grab one. This sounds like way too good to pass up. All right, that's it. That's everything. That is all I wanted to show you. Thank you guys so much for listening. And for watching my channel. If you're new to the channel, make sure you sub up. Hit that like button. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much. And to my channel members, you guys are amazing. Love you to death. Thank you so much. If you're not a channel member, guys, think about subscribing. Oh, all right. Anyway, that's it. That's everything. Thank you so much for watching. And take it easy.